Well, hey, good morning, Grace Fellowship. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on Easter Sunday. My name is James. I'm our Connect Pastor here at Grace. I'm joined with Keith, our family pastor, and we are so excited that you chose to join us this morning. And yeah. we've got a lot of cool stuff planned yeah. today. Um, yeah, Pastor, I'm excited. Yeah, Pastor Tim's message. Yep. Really good. Yep. Um, the worship band did us something a little bit different than what we've been doing the past few weeks. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, pretty uh, creative. Yeah. Yeah, it's it pretty looks, cool. It, it looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. else do we have planned today? So we, we're also going to be taking communion, which I'm excited about. Yeah. Uh, that we get to take it as a whole Grace family and you get to take it with your family as well. And so uh, I'm encouraging you even right now, maybe go ahead and if you need to go get some elements or if you pick them up from the church or maybe just grab some bread and juice or whatever you have around the house. Um, so that we can take communion together here later in the service. Yeah, yeah, and we'll be doing that um, right after worship. So yep, yeah, yep. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Um, so Keith, um, last week, yeah, we we opened up and kind of talked about you know our favorite candy and right. like, you know more particular uh, or more specifically your favorite yeah. Easter candy. Yeah. So we opened up a, a can of worms with this one, yes. James. Yes, we did. Um, you know, figuratively speaking. A can of Peeps. A can of Peeps, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> so I love Peeps. Yes. Um, if I could go back to like 2015, 2016, and open up a thing of Peeps yep. and let them sit out and then eat them, that would be incredible. Yeah. Like if I don't if I don't almost break a tooth on a Peep, then it's not a good Peep. Yeah. Or if the sugar is not turning to right, honey. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. If it's not like almost liquefied, then... Yeah. I've seen yeah. people like roast peeps. I was like, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. But that defeats the purpose. Yeah. Because you want them stale. Yeah. So I, I, I want to know. Yes. If you're if you're one of my peeps peeps, then like give me the praise hands <laughs> and the comments or something yeah. like that because we want to know where our peeps are. Yeah. Yeah. But Easter. what's your what's your favorite candy, James? So my favorite Easter candy. I have two. Okay. Um, Wait, I, do you like peeps? Uh, I do not enjoy Peeps. Um, Whatever. I love the smell of Peeps. Oh, interesting. But so I would, sugar. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't look sugar. But personally, I would rather roast just a regular marshmallow. Okay, I feel you. But like, not like you would roast a marshmallow, because I've seen you roast a marshmallow. Yeah. It takes time. I just stick it in the fire and burn it. No, <laughs> no, that's so sad. Anyways, I love a Reese's peanut butter egg. Oh, okay. Fantastic. I do love those. You gotta stick them in the freezer though, like bottom drawer freezer. That would be excellent. Pull it out. Wow. (laughs) It's the guilty pleasure freezer drawer for ice cream and Reese's eggs. (laughs) Um, And then I love the Oreo um, Easter bunnies. Okay. Like the whole Easter bunny made of Oreo. Yeah. It's amazing. Huh. Yeah. I'm always disappointed when they're hollow. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> it's like a sad dream. Right. Just like coming to reality. <laughs> no! <laughs> My buddy! No. Uh, well, we want to know what your favorite candy is. We do. Yeah. So if you're in the comments, drop your favorite Easter candy below. Yeah. We want to see it. Um, right. Just so we have a better understanding of who you are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can tell a lot about a man by his favorite candy. Or a woman. Or, or a kid. Or a woman. Or a kid. <laughs> yeah. Or <laughs> about a person. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, uh, one thing that we just want to th- say thank you for is just your continued generosity and partnering with us in, in ministry and what we've been able to accomplish um, over these past few weeks. Um, yeah. We've given um, so much to uh, the Good Neighbor, Good Neighbor Food Pantry yeah. here in Demont, um, just because people have been coming in throughout the week, donating things, dropping things off. Yep. Um, we've really been lo- uh, a- love- loving, able to support them right, uh, and right. in this time. And um, the other thing is our back pack program Mm -hmm. our after school backpack program we've raised over five thousand dollars for that um, just in a short amount of time just to be able to provide meals um, for for the students in the community so it's been it's been awesome it has yeah and and we're encouraging you to continue to give online to to help support us and 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 beyond that you know again seeing this as part of our worship and to say god you know what these may be crazy times but we are so blessed Mm -hmm. even just to you know, be here and be alive and, um, you know, we're, we're giving back a portion uh, to say thank you. And so we're encouraging you to continue to do that because it helps support us and it helps us continue to worship God in that way too. Yeah. And it lets us do cool things like this where we still have Easter. Yeah. 
yep. in, in online at home. Right. Uh, so it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, if you're new here today, we would love to know that as well. If you just type in new or you know first timer or whatever, we would love uh, to be able to connect with you and follow up with you uh, throughout the service or after the service. Yeah. Uh, so if you just drop that in the comments as well, we'd love to follow up with you. Um, but before we jump into today's service, we have a quick message uh, from some of our families here at Grace just wishing you a happy Easter. So check this out. Happy Easter, Jesus is risen. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! We miss our Grace family and we can't wait to see you all again. Happy Easter! Hello Grace Fellowship. We wanted to wish everyone a happy Easter and we're praying that everyone is safe. Happy Easter from the Van Burens. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter everybody at Grace from Chrissy and my dog Staley. He's risen. He's risen indeed. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Grace Fellowship. We miss you. Happy Easter everyone from me and my Easter Bunny. I love you.
Hey Grace, so we are going to be taking communion together on this Easter Sunday and as I set up communion and, and as we start to prepare our hearts and our minds for that, uh, I'm going to encourage you to kind of make sure that you have everything ready for communion. With whatever elements you're going to be using, make sure to grab those. Uh, maybe grab the family so that you can take communion together as a whole family as well. But, but as we kind of prepare our hearts for communion, I want you to think back to the very first Last Supper that they had. And think, think about what was going through Jesus' mind. Think about what was going through the disciples' minds as they were kind of sitting there. And Jesus is, is probably um, thinking about what he's going to be going through. And even as he's doing that, he's still serving the disciples. He's still leading them uh, into that relationship with him. And so he knows that, that here in just a little bit that he's going to be hanging up on the cross. He's going to be taking the sins of the entire world upon him. But then three days later, and that's what we, we get to celebrate today, that he rose again from the dead. 
right? He rose and because of that, we can have a relationship and a lasting relationship for eternity with him. But, but the Lord's Supper, this last supper that they had, it represents uh, what Jesus did for us on the cross. And so think back again, and, and this is what he says uh, in Matthew 26, 26. We're gonna read about the first last supper. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, giving it to the disciples and said, take and eat it, this is my body. So right now, if you wanna, if you wanna take your bread and eat the bread and remember that, that this is Jesus' body that was broken for you. And then he took the cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. So now I want you to take uh, whatever you have gotten to drink and drink it, remembering that Jesus poured out his blood for you. So now as we have taken communion together, we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for every single one of us. And, and even on Easter, we get to celebrate that sacrifice and know that three days later after he was killed, he rose again so that we can have an everlasting relationship with him. Well, let me pray for us and then we will continue to move on in our service. God, thank you so much for the sacrifice that you have given for every single one of us. God, I pray that during this Easter time, we would remember that, we would thank you for that. God, and even in these times that, of, that are filled with uncertainty, Lord, I pray that we would still uh, focus in on you and focus in on our relationship with you. God, we love you, we thank you, and we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray.
Grace family, all week long we have been reading out of the Jesus Storybook Bible and we've been reading the Easter story and today is my favorite part. So if you would gather your kids and we will get started. Come on guys. Today's story is called God's Wonderful Surprise. Here we go. Jesus' friends were sad. They would never see their best friend again. How could this happen? Wasn't Jesus the rescuer? The king God had promised? It wasn't supposed to end like this. Yes, but whoever said anything about the end? Just before sunrise on the third day, God sent an earthquake, an angel from heaven. When the guards saw the angel, they fell down with fright. The angel rolled the huge stone away, sat on top of it, and waited. At the first glimmer of dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other women headed to the tomb to wash Jesus' body. The early morning sun slanted through the ancient olive trees, drops of dew glittering on leaves and grasses, and little tears everywhere. The friends walked quietly along the hilly path through the olive groves until they reached the tomb and immediately noticed something odd. It was wide open. They peered through the opening into the dark tomb. But wait, Jesus' body was gone. And something else, a shining man was there with clothes made from lightning. Don't be scared, the angel said. But they couldn't help it. They screamed anyway. The angel asked them, What are you doing here? This is a tomb, and tombs are for dead people. The women couldn't speak. Jesus isn't dead anymore. He's alive again. And their hearts leapt. And the angel laughed with such gladness that they felt for a moment as if they'd woken from a nightmare. The other women rushed home, but Mary stayed behind. How could it be true? Jesus was definitely dead. How could he be alive? Just then, Mary heard someone else in the garden. Perhaps it's the gardener, she thought. He'll know where Jesus' body is. I don't know where Jesus is, Mary said urgently. I can't find him. But it was all right. Jesus knew where she was, and he had found her. Mary! Only one person said her name like that, and she could hear her heart thumping. She turned around, and she could just make out a figure. She shaded her eyes to see, and thought she was dreaming. But she wasn't dreaming. She was seeing. Jesus! Mary fell to the ground. Sudden tears filled her eyes and great sobs shook her whole body. And all she wanted in that moment was to cling to Jesus and never let him go. You'll be able to hold on to me later, Mary, Jesus said gently. And always be close to me. But now, go and tell the others that I'm alive. Mary ran and ran all the way to the city. She had never run so fast or so far in all her life. She felt she could have run forever. She didn't even feel like her feet touched the ground. The sun seemed to be dancing and gleaming and bounding across the sky, racing with her and shining brighter than she could ever remember in the clean, fresh air. And it seemed to her that morning as she ran, almost as if the whole world had been made new almost as if the world was singing for joy. The trees, tiny sounds in the grass, the birds, her heart. Was God really making everything sad come untrue? Was he making even death come untrue? She couldn't wait to tell Jesus's friends. They won't believe it, she laughed. She was right, of course. Thank you guys so much for joining us this morning for our Easter story. We miss each and every one of you and can't wait till we're back together. All right, let's go to Pastor Tim for our lesson this morning. Well, thanks, Jamie, and happy Easter to all of you who are joining us online this morning. I hope uh, this is the last time we have to do Easter like this, but I'm uh, so grateful that we live in a time that we can do Easter like this, and so I hope this service is an encouragement to you. 
Uh, just a note before I get started, next week we are launching into a sermon series, Walking Through Psalm 23. Uh, James and I talked about Psalm 23 on the Rise Up podcast last week, and we thought that would be a timely passage uh, to work through in the next several weeks. So uh, stay tuned to that. Uh, in these times of uncertainty, there is one thing that is certain, and that is God's love and faithfulness to us. And why can I say that? Uh, because of what we're celebrating today, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so uh, that's, that's the hope that keeps us going. That's the hope that keeps us living. And so I'm going to talk about, I'm going to read 1 Peter chapter 1 uh, in just a moment. If you want to grab a Bible and get 1 Peter chapter 1 ready. Uh, but before I read that, I want to share a verse out of Romans 15, 13 that says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that th by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope, abound in hope. Living, New Living Translation says overflowing with confident hope. And the Phillips paraphrase says radiant with hope, radiant with hope. That's my prayer for you today, uh, that you would not just possess hope, but that you would radiate uh, hope in the world around you. Here's the deal, friends. As believers, you are salt and light. Uh, in a very difficult world. You are the stabilizing factor uh, in a society filled with crisis. Everyone around you is looking, is worried uh, about the future, uh, and you are the one with the faith and the hope uh, that, is, that is a stabilizing factor and a witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. And so with that thought in mind, I want to read uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, starting with verse 3. It's a rather lengthy passage, but it talks about hope, and so I want to read it uh, to get the full context. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. Though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see, now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So Peter is writing this letter uh, to the persecuted church, a church that is facing all kinds of trials and difficulty. And he begins by reminding them uh, that they are born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Here's the deal. The f followers of Jesus are marked by a distinct hope, confident in the promises of God despite the circumstances of our life. And I love the phrase that he uses, a living hope. Uh, you have been born again to a living hope. What's the opposite of a living hope? Well, it, it, it's a dead hope. Proverbs uh, talks about that, that hope deferred makes the heart sick. A shattered hope shatters lives. Here's the deal, friends. The level of your anxiety, uh, discouragement, disappointment, and fear is directly related to where you have put your hope. If your hope is in your ability to control your life and manage your difficulties. If anything, this crisis has taught us that is, is that we're not in control. We are powerless con to control the outcomes of our lives. Uh, that doesn't mean that we should be passive, uh, but it does mean that your ability to weather the storm is directly related to the source of hope. Uh, so, so where is your hope found? We are living in a world desperately searching for hope. And for good reason. I mean, technology has never been better. Uh, medical science has never been more advanced. The world has never been more prosperous. And suddenly, without warning, a tiny little particle, invisible to the naked eye, jumped from a bat to a human in a far-off place that most of us had never heard before. And in a matter of weeks, the entire world has been brought to its knees. 
It is no respecter of persons, race, nationality, creed, status, wealth, gender. It has paralyzed us and put us in a place of peril. A lot of people are wondering, where is God in all of this? And I'm, I'm certainly not qualified to answer uh, all that he's doing, uh, but I do know this, that every time uh, I am brought to my knees through the circumstances of my life, I am reminded of who's in control. Ephesians chapter 1 says that God works all things according to his will. Romans chapter 8, that familiar verse, he is working all things together for my good and his glory. It all depends on where I've placed my hope. Followers of Jesus are people of hope. We are distinct because of the hope that we have in Jesus. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 24 says, The Lord is my portion, therefore I will hope in him. Isaiah 40 31 says, Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. And Jeremiah 29, a favorite verse of many, tells us that he has a plan for us that is good and full of hope. So a couple of things uh, to mention. Follow, first of all, followers of Jesus don't get a pass on suffering. Uh, we, we, are, we live in a broken world with all the other broken people. We are broken people. COVID-19 is not intimidated by John 3.16, um, but it's no match for John 16 uh, either. I mean, in, in other words, the virus may put us down, but it will not take us out. Uh, some of us, uh, some of our brothers and sisters uh, are, have been directly victimized by this virus, but they are still victors in Jesus Christ. So that's the first point. Believers are not different because of our circumstances. We are different because of our hope. And the second thing I want to mention is that we may not know what God is doing in this situation, but we do know what God is thinking. He has made that known to us. We may not be able to see uh, all of his plan in this, but we do know God's mind for us. Psalm 139, how precious are your thoughts toward us. Psalm 103 tells us that he forgives us and heals us and redeems us and he crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. He knows your name. He, uh, he's attentive to your cry. Uh, he calls you his own. Nothing can separate you from his love. Galatians chapter 3 says he has rescued us from the curse of the law, from the penalty of sin. He has made clear through his word, his written word, the Bible, and his living word, Jesus, uh, who came to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. Uh, he, he made it clear that he has rescued us from the greatest pandemic that every human being is subject to, and that's the pandemic of sin. Galatians 3 tells us that he has rescued us from the curse of the law, the pandemic of sin, the penalty of sin. This is how much God loves you. He, he sent his one and only son uh, to do for you what you could not do for yourself. He lived a perfect life and then took the punishment that belonged to you so that you could live forever with him. That is our hope. We are people of hope. Now, what does that mean? Well, most people think of hope in the English language as wishful thinking. We use this word uh, hope in this way. I hope it doesn't rain today. Uh, I hope to get some yard work done this afternoon. I hope the kids come over tonight. Uh, we treat hope like a general uncertainty of a preferred future. This is what we would like to happen, but we're not really sure. Uh, we think of hope as a, as a preferred experience based in uncertainty. Uh, but that is not biblical hope. Uh, what Peter is talking about in this passage is a certainty not yet experienced. Biblical hope is not something we'd like to get. It is something that we know we will get. Example, Christmas. Uh, you have a box beautifully wrapped for you. Uh, you hope that a certain thing is in that box, but you don't know. Uh, and when you don't know, friends, that's, that's not hoping, that's, that's wishing. You, you wish something were in that box, but you have no evidence to be sure. Unless you've peaked. <laughs> Admit it, some of you are peekers, right? So here, here's the deal. Uh, when you know what's in that box, you're not worried or anxious or surprised. You're just waiting. And you can wait because you know. Biblical hope is waiting for what you know. And what do we know and how do we know it? 
Well, we know a lot of things. We know that God loves us. We know that God has a plan for us. We know that God has a place prepared for us. And how do we know that? Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Here's, here's the thing. When Jesus was on earth, he predicted everything that would happen to him. And no one got it. All of his disciples, none of them understood. It wasn't until he died and they saw him standing in front of them alive with the nail prints in his hands that they came to believe uh, everything that he had told them. Uh, For example, uh, I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus was sharing that with his disciples and they had no idea what he meant. In that very passage, uh, Thomas uh, says to Jesus, I, I, what in the world are you talking about? I mean, if you're going away and you're coming back to get us, why don't we just go with you now? He, he didn't understand it. But when, when Jesus died, uh, uh, they began to understand. When he died, they didn't know what to do. Their life fell apart. They ran for their lives. They hid behind locked doors. They wallowed in this despair. But when they saw him alive, think about it. Everything Jesus had taught them made sense. Made so much sense that they were willing to die, and most of them did die, for everything Jesus claimed. Romans 8, 24 says, In this hope we are saved. Followers of Jesus are marked by hope. We are grounded in a reality not yet experienced. And so Peter, in this passage, in verse 4, says, This hope is imperishable, it is undefiled, it is unfading, it is kept in heaven for you. Eternal life is guaranteed on the strength of a promise validated by his resurrection. In other words, if Jesus rose from the dead, nothing can stand against you. Nothing can discourage you or defeat you. Nothing can separate you from his love. So how's your faith And where's your hope? Uh, We learned uh, this in our study through James uh, over the last few months, that trouble has a way of revealing our character and exposing our idols. Suffering forces us to examine what we really believe and where we've actually placed our hope. David said in uh, Psalm 119 uh, that it was good for him to be afflicted because it taught him the ways of God. Job said that the sufferings of his life moved him from just knowing about God to actually knowing God personally. And the Apostle Paul, in 2 Corinthians, he talks about a thorn in the flesh uh, that he could not explain or could not control. He didn't know what was in the plan of God, but he did know what was in the mind of God. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul allowed God to use that thorn to bring an experience of grace that Paul would not have ever known otherwise. There's a lot of fear in our world. Always has been. Uh, Once this crisis is over, you know what? Something else will terrify us. But here's the deal. At the root of every fear is the fear of death. I mean, we were created to live forever. And so anything that threatens that life, our greatest fear of losing the life we've been created for, that's the fear. That's, that's why you have stay-at-home orders. That's why you have medical professionals taking extra precautions. That's why you have panic throughout the world. Every crisis gives power to the fear of death. Because listen, I mean, you can, you can find a cure for COVID-19, and I have every confidence that at some point, our scientists and medical professionals are going to find a vaccine, a cure that will keep the coronavirus from taking lives. Uh, You can find a cure for COVID-19. The question is, can you find a cure for death? That's the question, isn't it? Is there a cure for death? Is there a vaccine? Has anyone ever conquered death? And if so, how can I get in on that? Well, we all need to understand that we will not conquer death through our intellect or our ingenuity. We will not overcome death through our merits or our good deeds. You will only conquer death by putting your life in the hands of the one who conquered death. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 says, We are people of flesh and blood. That is why Jesus became one of us. He died to destroy the devil who had power over death. But he also died to rescue all of us who live each day in the fear of dying. 
And so this morning, friends, as we celebrate Easter, I want to remind you, believer, that you have been born again to a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And here's here's, uh, what I want to, here's what's so encouraging and exciting about all this. At some point, uh, this current crisis will give way to another crisis and another crisis and another crisis. That is not to minimize human suffering. My heart goes out to everyone who has been affected by this horrible virus. But human history just tells us in this world, you will have trouble. You will, you will always have it. It will never go away. But there's also something that will never go away, and that is hope. You are never without hope because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You have been inflicted with something that has altered your life forever, and it will not change. It cannot be taken from you, and it will not fail. It is imperishable, undefiled, and unfailing. And so it's important for me to, to talk to those uh, watching also who have not in, been inflicted by this vaccine. You don't have the vaccine. You are hopeless for a cure. And you need to realize you will not beat this on your own. Uh, you will not overpower this uh, through your own strength or merit. It is by grace you have been saved, not by work, your work, but by the work of Jesus Christ on the cross for your sins. And so I want to invite those of you this morning who have never done this to submit your life and to surrender your life to the only one who has conquered death, to the only one who can offer you hope through his resurrection. I want to pray a prayer and listen to this prayer. Jesus, I realize I cannot manufacture a cure for death. You are the only one who has conquered it so that I could live. And so today I am surrendering my life to you. I commit my ways to your way. I accept your forgiveness for my sins. Make me your own. Amen. If you agreed with that prayer for the very first time, I would love to know that. Uh, You can message us on this Facebook page or you can email us on our church website. But we'd love to know uh, about your decision Uh, And we would be honored to help you take your next step in this journey called faith. Because that's what this day is all about. That's what every day is all about. The hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So for all of us, again, thank you for joining us this morning. Happy Easter. Be safe. Stay connected. And we'll see you next week. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Tim, for just such a timely message, um, just about the hope that we get to have uh, in Jesus and that he's defeated the grave, you know, three days after Good Friday mm. um, when he went to die for us on the cross, um, just that he rose again. And that's what we put our hope, our, insur- our assurance, our faith, yeah. uh, just our lives in. And, and, and I couldn't think of just a, a better way to put it than, yeah. than what Pastor Tim did. Yeah. And one of the things I was kind of thinking through this week is, you know, on the news and social media and everything like that, that... You know, they were saying that this was going to be one of the toughest weeks uh, of this thing so far, and they're expecting a lot of deaths and, you know, probably one of the hardest weeks in American history. And I don't think it's any coincidence that this was the week leading up to Easter Mm -hmm. and realizing that uh, Jesus, even during this week, some 2,000 years ago, was probably having the hardest week of his entire life. Um, And the hope that he brings because of that and the hope that we can have because of him in these uncertain times and these really dark and and weird times is, it's incredible to kind of match those two up and and see that hope that that Pastor Tim was talking about as well. Yeah, that's such a good thought and and that's why you know, we want to celebrate if today, if that was the first time you ever put your hope mm. in Jesus, we want to know that. Uh, if you would just type hope in the comments, we would love to celebrate that with you yeah. and reach out to you and just say thanks for joining us uh, just as a way um, as us being able to connect with you. Yeah. With you. yeah. Uh, well, hey, uh, another thing, if you want to continue to partner with us financially, we would uh, really appreciate that as we just continue to bring the gospel to you in your home um, during this time. If you could just go to connectatgrace.org backslash giving. And you can set up your online giving there. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for joining us today on Easter. Yeah. Yeah. Keith, you yeah. want to tell the people happy Easter? Happy Easter. Happy Easter, We're guys. so glad. <laughs> and we hope that you have an incredible time with, with family or whoever you're quarantined with. Yeah. <laughs> have a great day, happy guys. Happy Easter.